Welcome into the Modelo Blue White Player Show. We are here at the Penn State Golf Course. Uh, make sure you guys come out this Saturday if you are in State College. Come out this Saturday to the Penn State Golf Course at 3.30. Penn State takes on USC. We have a watch party here, food, drinks, all that good stuff. Modelo? Modelo will be on there. Draft? I hey, hope Modelo so. On draft right I, Modelo on draft. It sounds... You talk about a beautiful thing. I, I, I seal the deal with Modelo, and I call over the golf course. I said, hey, guys. I said, we're sponsoring my, my, my Modelo. He goes, well, that's great, because we just put it on tap yesterday. I said, well, there we go. What a time. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that wasn't a coincidence. Nope. Okay. Well, we'll start talking. We'll start talking about that. Let's start talking to our guest, <laughs> Don DeLuca. Thank you for joining us today, man. Um, two-time captain, Don DeLuca. I just have to ask you right off the bat: What does that mean to you? I know you grew up a Penn State fan. Um, obviously, came here as a walk-on, ended up getting put on scholarship, and now two-time captain. Uh, what has that just meant to you as a whole? And we'll get into that whole story in a second. But just being voted by the peers, as you know, it is a it is a teammate-led vote. Uh, seeing that you are a leader of that team, what has it meant to you, man? I mean, it's a huge honor to be able to be in that role and that a whole team sees me as that guy for them and be able to lead them and keep them accountable. Yeah, and it's, you know, and, and the likes LBU, man, likes that we saw Puzz, Paul Polozny mm -hmm. out there at halftime. He looks like he could still start Here on this team. Go. Like it, we him, every dude, female dude. audience member just went. Oh, <laughs> there, there we go. Puzz gets a Puzz gets yeah, a round Puzz. of applause, dude. It's I unbelievable. It is insane. Yeah. I think uh, you, him. We could put together a whole starting linebacker core between him, Dan Connor, who else are we, and then uh, Sean Lee. Was, yeah, was the, yeah they, they could all probably all, all three of them could probably still play. Yeah, we 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 got some ballers around here. Um, but Dom, I just want to start. Going right back. Me and Dom, for those that don't know, roommates, mm -hmm. we came in together. Um, so let's go back to the beginning real quick. And let's talk about when you were in high school. I want to talk about your state championship game. Um, you basically, you tear up your knee and you score like three touchdowns. Can you just walk me through, first off, what, what happened in that, that final high school game of yours? Yeah, we uh, we went down 14-0 at high half. School, what high school? Wyoming Area High School. There you go. There you 2019. Go. Uh, went down at half to Central Valley from Pittsburgh and uh, opening drive of the third quarter uh, tore my ACL uh, ended up coming out for a play. Next play, we threw an interception on offense, uh, ran back onto the field without the dog letting, letting him uh, check me out at all. <laughs> got a little, got in a little trouble for that by my parents, but uh, they were okay with it. Uh, ended up scoring 21 unanswered points. I mean, threw two touchdowns, ran for the last one and uh, ended up winning the game. So I, we just got to he, – he With one that, ACL. With one ACL. With we, one ACL, yeah. Yeah. Three go. touchdowns, one ACL, state champion. <laughs> I, that is when, – when you when I first heard Dom's, like, high school story, it was like, oh, my God. <laughs> that's like – it's a fairy tale. Uh, but then – so after that, you decide to walk on at Penn State. And I know, um, you know, originally you had some offers, and then, you know, the injury happens, and you had to overcome some real adversity. Can you just talk about, you know, where you are today – you know, all that you had to go through, what what was that like to finally get to a point where, like I said, two-time captain, you were absolutely doing your thing out there? I mean, that first semester where all my classmates went to school, I was just home doing rehab. I went to community college, actually, uh, Luzerne County Community College, took two classes, was doing rehab while I was there. And just being able to work with no lights on you and just being by yourself, I mean, I feel like that kind of made me into the person I am today. And what helped me succeed when I got to Penn State. I mean, I wasn't given many opportunities my first year, and I really just made the most of it my second when I had my opportunity. Coach Diaz put me out there a couple times, and uh, I was just trying to do my job for him at a high level, and uh, and I'm becoming one of my greatest years and greatest success. No doubt, yeah. I, I remember, so I guess it was the spring game, um, two, like 2022 mm -hmm. spring game, when you had two interceptions, and no yeah. one really knew who Dom was getting. That was like the introduction to Dom DeLuca. Mm -hmm. He had two picks. And then from there, the rest was history. Uh, and it, so it, it is really, it's great to see. And like I said, great to see you leading a, a defense mm -hmm. that is now, I mean, continually one of the best defenses in college football. What is it like to get to play next to guys like Kobe King, Tony Rojas, and then know you got those dudes back there at safety. I mean, the guys up front, what, to play with a defense of that many great players, what, what has that been like for you? I mean, it just gives you freedom, freedom to go out there and just, like, do your job and play at a high level and take that risk because you know your buddy's going to make you right no matter what. Even coming down from safety, I mean, Dakari Nelson's playing great at, yeah. as a linebacker now for us. I mean, just learning from him, the way he thinks from a safety perspective is helping me play better now, and it's helping our whole room play better. That's pretty yeah. awesome, so. 
You are you wearing zero in honor of uh, Landon's GPA? Yes, I am. There you go. Yes, I am. Yes, I like that. It's, I, that's, you got to take care of your roommate. You exactly. know what I mean? Say, like, hey, Lando, this is for you. That, that yeah, means a tribute. It means a lot. All the zero. times he attended. Zero point zero right there for you, baby. I all TK, love. All love. Let's go. I hope TK's not listening guy. to this. I'm going to give you a call. But no, let's, for those that don't know, let's talk about the number zero. I love zero. the zero thing. Yeah, let's. so so it, do you want to give the origin story? zero ever an option? No, it was not. Damn it. No. That would make sense for you, Goon. That would look good on you, I think. I think so, yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 I think you need yeah, number one. Zero. Number one would look good. Like oh one? Just one. Just the number one? Yeah. Yeah, number one wow. on you. <laughs> you could very thin number one there, you know. <laughs> we, we're gonna build it to build it to size here or scale? You know, no, that's a small jersey. You're I love it. <laughs> so no, but I love the I love the number zero. I love tradition. I truly, truly love traditions. And I love when people bring in new traditions, and that's one of them. It's I I really, really because it sets you apart and say, Yeah, you know what? I'm a you know, who, who elects you? Your special team's captain, right? Is it what a zero is for? Uh, not necessarily just the captain. It could be whoever they feel like is their special team's guy and Good. whoever takes takes advantage of their opportunity on special teams and uh, kind of like a second coach for them. Sure, man. The, the first guy was uh, Jonathan Sutherland. Right? Right? Every team has has to have that special teams mm-hmm. like warrior mm-hmm. the animal. No, well, okay. Let's awesome. let's let's talk about that, Dom. Because I saw you out there on kickoff, and I was all I could do was just think about you. I was like, dude. For those that don't know, when you are going down on kickoff, and there's a reason the NFL changed it. They completely changed the kickoff to take off those high collisions. And but it is still the same in college football. You are running full speed down the field and basically waiting for someone to hit you, or you have to go deliver the hit. And Dom has been seen many times on TV delivering the hit and then getting up screaming that type of thing. But can you just take the people through? What does that take from a mindset standpoint to get ready to, I mean, like I said, run just down the full, the, the speed, like the full, breaker, full speed. Right? Yeah, you're wedge well, breaking. Well, you know, there's no wedges no, anymore. No more. We can't do that. Wedges Allegiant. are illegal. Yeah. Allegiant. Yeah. I mean, well, it was a double team, so we can call it like a wedge breaker there. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I mean, to start the game off, I mean, missing a week that kind of put a little chip on my shoulder, I feel like. And then also like setting the tone for the start of the game, opening kickoff. Oh, I totally mean, does. What are you going to do? And. You truck a guy on the opening kickoff, you come to the field, everyone's hyped, the defense is ready it, to go, they all saw yeah. it, and I mean, I feel like it just brings the team up, team morale and all that. I, uh, we used to, I played the guy in Terry Killens, who's now an NFL referee, he's the first guy to ever be an NFL player, played in the Super Bowl, and then he refereed, refereed the Super Bowl last mm-hmm. year. Uh, he was a defensive end for us, but he was fast as lightning, and he was our wedge breaker going down the field. And it was like literally, it was like we get down scoring a touchdown, talk to the coach, and be like, he'd be, he'd be talking about, we're watching TK, we're watching TK. You know, <laughs> that's all you wanted to watch. Yeah. So another guy, so I have some older friends who were like, dude, back in '83, we had this kid number 31, this tall, skinny white kid. And I'm like, dude, that's Shane Conlon. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> in 1983, Shane Conlon. <laughs> so they would like, like the whole like crowd, like my buddy was like, dude, that guy would just go down and just dirt people, just mm-hmm. destroy people. And then get up like <laughs> half a tooth. <laughs> yeah. So he was like, they go to a game and he's like, damn, why is he not on the kickoff? And he's like, this is bull. You know, he's all mad. He's like, they pulled him off the team. And then he runs out. He's a starting linebacker for the game. So <laughs> it does lead. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The, the guys get behind you. The coaches notice. And they say, you know what? They see you doing that on the special teams. And the coach is like, we need to get this guy on the field here. So would you say, I mean, that's how you got your shot at defense was through special teams? Oh, 100%. Mm-hmm. I mean, my first year I started on kickoff and kick return. Uh, as a freshman, played four games there, started in the Outback Bowl there. And then Purdue, 2022, I mean, I had two op- two kickoff, kickoff to tackles, and I mean, I feel like that's kind of set us up. Yeah, you set the tone like that. Coaches will definitely take notice. And I will no, say, I remember, it, they brought in like a GM type guy at some point, and the main thing he said to everybody in the room was like, hey, mm-hmm. we look for guys that make impact on special teams because we, when you're when an NFL team wants to spend capital on you, you, unless you're really good, you have to be able to do a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. So if you are a baller on special teams, that is how you're able to stick around. Shout out Dan Chisnia, yeah. who basically, he's now playing a little bit of wide receiver. I think he's on the Cardinals. Yeah, uh, he is. And he has been in the league for about six years. And Franklin always tells us, hey, he did not take really one offensive, mm-hmm. decent defensive snap here at Penn State, only special teams. And he is making NFL money for the past five, six years. So that is how important special teams really is. Uh, but moving, let's go back to defense. I don't want to talk about, obviously, this is Tom Allen's first year uh, coming in, switching over from being a head coach to a defensive coordinator. What has it been like to kind of just start to, you know, learn from him? And obviously, there's a bit of an adjustment when you're, you know, adjusting from one coaching style to another. So how has that, that whole process been? 
I don't know if you remember from uh, when Coach Diaz first got here, he would like blow the whistle during like seven on seven and Coach Franklin would like lose his mind. We had that once or twice. So that, that was always funny to see. Because yeah, he's to used see. to being the head coach. coach. It's like, <laughs> that is There's a lot of whistles yeah. out yeah. there, yeah. man. <laughs> he just blow the random whistle and it caught everyone off guard. But I mean, he's he's really adapting well. I mean, he he's a really people's guy. I mean, we, we talked to him. I mean, I went to dinner with him, have great conversations with him. And he just really wants to get to know you. And that's what I love mm. about him. Yeah, my, my favorite thing I have to ask because it was it was talked about in the media, and Kobe was talking about how Dan Connor took over the headset responsibilities because <laughs> Coach Allen's voice is so like raspy <laughs> that they can't understand it. Well, he gets to like the third, fourth quarter, he can't even understand because him. he's screaming the whole yeah, time. Yeah. Yes, for those that don't know, now on offense and defense, one player can have a green dot on their helmet, and what that green dot means is you have a mic in your helmet and you are listening to that coordinator on um, on your side of the ball, and they can communicate with you. I think up to 10 seconds on the play clock, and then the, the mic uh, cuts off. So a little more responsibility now, uh, and Dan Connor does that for us. Who Let's talk about him for a second. You get to learn from a LBU great Dan Connor. He is around the facility, and I think one of the guys, if you don't know who he is, you will not know him. He's like quiet, just walks, yeah. minds his own business, but is like a stone-cold killer. So you just talk about leading tackler in Penn State history. Yeah. What has it been he like is. to learn from him, man? Basically, yeah. he's amazing. We're trying to get him to sign his step down at the bookstore downtown, but he doesn't want to. So oh, he won't do it. I mean, he's like, "What? Well, I'm just gonna walk in there and just say who I am." I mean, <laughs> understandable, but <laughs> we're gonna. Get I've been trying stuff. to get him to, so now we can. We can work use this. My favorite thing about Dan is like coming in. You'll walk into the facility. You're getting you know a little bit of cereal, you know, water before or whatever, and you see Dan Connor just in this like two hour long like intense workout in the corner, just getting after it. Mm. You could tell he still has that that killer mindset for sure. Dude, oh. he was, I, I'm telling you right now, I mean, I, I was coaching when he was here, and I never saw him get blocked. He never got knocked off. He's like, I, I called him a cat because he never got knocked off his feet. It was unbelievable. He would get hit by a 350-pound man. He would take a step back and then, like, duck around him and this and that, but it was like that was as much room as he gave up. He wasn't going around blocks. He wasn't going through blocks. But he could eat a block and just get guys. And it was unbelievable his ability to not be, stay blocked. And again, I mean, I never have never seen anything like it in my life. People were always like, who's the best? Puzz Leslie, Connor Lee. And I would say Connor was the greatest tackler. Lee had the best uh, 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 mind for the game. He right. could we read saw, the game. Yeah, he saw the board happen fast. And he yeah. was just a complete maniac. And Puzz was just the greatest leader out there, lead by example guy. But Connor was just a, a, the next level when it came to like you could not block the guy. It was just mm -hmm. unbelievable. And you think you have a great shot on him, and he just goes and then he just goes yeah. around, and you're like, "What the hell just happened there? How did he make that tackle?" And he made a ton of tackles. Obviously, he's mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. all time leader at LBU. So uh, yeah, that's great. You got him as I mean, there's a guy you can look up to. You know, you you go to lock him every day, and you know, there's a thing about. Guys who played and didn't play that, you know, a, a, an athlete and, and, a, and a football player looks at it and says, okay, this guy's been through it. Dan was through it. He went through everything, you know, mm -hmm. everything he had done in his career. You just look at it and say, okay, I want every, every ounce of knowledge you have. Exactly. And, yeah. And you I mean, he sponge. Yeah. That's what we all try to do. I mean, the way he takes us through practice, I mean, he understands he's not trying to kill us through during Indies. He's trying to make sure the work is going to relate to what we're doing that week or what we need to work on. And I mean, we do a lot of block destruction with him, and he's really helping us with that. And I feel like it's really taking us to our next step. And that's the other thing about Tom Allen. We, we, me and me and Landon and they just talk about it all the time. Like Tom Allen goes from coaching Indiana guys, which he may have had a four star guy one time. Mm -hmm. Who knows how many guys he's had as has four star or five star guys. Now he wakes up in the morning and he goes, "Well, oh, I got five four stars or five four or five stars on my defense right now. I got to figure out where to plot them." Mm -hmm. Do you think he wakes up in the morning because I can't wait to go to work today? Oh, most yeah. definitely. He's excited. Right? Where he he's is. coming from he Indiana is. to here. And he could drop a guy like Abdul to defensive end and say, you know what? We still have three or four very good linebackers, and we're not going to skip a beat. And you guys haven't. And it's very, you guys have done a great job this year. Yeah, real quick, Dom. I, I want to go back because uh, we always ask all our guys, uh, when you decided to go to Penn State, what other schools were you looking at? What other schools were you considering? And I know you're you know, growing up. Was it in your mind? I mean, I know you were a Penn State, diehard Penn State fan. Were you for sure, you're like, I'm going to go to Penn State? Or was there a couple other places in your mind? I mean, I always knew I wanted to go to Penn State. I mean, if I had the opportunity, I would take it. But I really almost committed to West Virginia. Oh, man. I was there for a couple of visits. And, uh, I mean, it was close. But uh, I ended up 
committing to Penn State. I mean, I couldn't let that opportunity. Were they pass. offered a scholarship? No, it was a walk out. Okay. So, yeah. Even there. After I lost, after I after any money senior, anywhere? No, I okay. mean I had I had Villanova uh, after my state championship game and a tear my ACL. We didn't know till surgery. Yep. Like, MRI didn't show it. Yeah, you like, gotta right love those surgery. ones. So you did that mm -hmm. when you wake up and they're like, "Hey, uh, like, by the way, ACLs. we're gonna put you under, but if you wake up and you may have a reconstructed knee." So uh, yeah, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> uh, I had that my senior year, and I was like, "What?" And they're like, "We're gonna take your meniscus out, but if your ACL is down, we got a good complete repair." But I'm like. What? Mm -hmm. well, that's hard. So you actually went through it and woke up with a completely reached. Yes. Freaking I was so confused and didn't know what was going oh on. Oh my God, dude. You had like lived my nightmare because I, I thought about that. I was like, man, can you imagine that? Waking up and your whole knee is reconstructed and you thought you were getting a uh, meniscus tear removed and you, you woke that's up. That's exactly like that. what I thought it was. Oh, dude. I dunked a basketball the day before surgery, not thinking it was going to be anything wrong. Oh, I was like, that ain't nothing. That's all right. A little like flex. Like, yeah, a little flex. Hey, what's up? <laughs> oh, hey, Tom, how you doing? <laughs> I thought scored three touchdowns on a torn ACL. Like, yeah, you know, Duncan. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, do you do you remember when we played basketball? Oh, in, East Hall. Uh, so East Hall, yes. after we got here, it was our we went through. We were it was like 2021. It was freshly mm -hmm. January of 2021 when me and Don both got here. So COVID was still a thing, and like the campus was still bare. But the spring semester, everybody came back, and you had done all the classes, and we were still there for a couple weeks afterwards before we got to go home. And we went down to East Halls and the basketball court there, and we were running games. We were doing fives with five. Uh, with it was people like in the dorms, yeah. with people in the dorms, and we were just killing them because you know you think it's like superhuman athletes, like Kobe King. You're like throwing an oop to Kobe King. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> Kalen was throwing like windmills down. I was yeah. like, well, what is going on? It was crazy. So yeah, no, those are the those are the good memories when you were in that freshman year. Nothing really matters no. too much. You're <laughs> you're just here to have fun and get a little bit better. But speaking of that freshman year. You came in and you thought you were going to play safety, right? Yeah, I was playing safety all the way till the last winter workout. They moved me to linebacker, and that's when I was with uh, Pry and Coach Lord. I'll never um, forget, man. When we were we were walking after the first <laughs> after after the, first, the first spring practice. Oh my! You know, God. I didn't really I didn't really know Dob was like switching around. He's like, yeah, they moved me to linebacker. He's like, I don't know much. This is this is really difficult, man. I'm trying to learn a lot. And uh, next thing you know, about three years later, here we sit with two time mm. captain Dom DeLuca. So I think that just shows his work ethic and all all the work that he has put in on and clearly everybody respects it. But Dom, I've mentioned this. We're, we're going to have to talk about this. You, me, and about eight to 10 other guys went to Guatemala uh, two springs ago. Mm. And I, I think for me, that is still one of the mo my most favorite trips of all time. We got to go down there and hand out shoes to underprivileged, qu uh, underprivileged kids in Guatemala. And my favorite Dom DeLuca story is that we were down there and it was Mother's Day in Guatemala. And so there's a lot of moms coming and they're bringing their kids and we're handing out shoes. And this kind of this bigger kid, they say, hey, we don't have a size for him. And Dom goes, well, what size are you? And it turns out he was the exact same size as Dom. Dom only brought one pair of tennis shoes <laughs> and Dom takes off his shoes and gives them to the kid. So Dom goes home with no shoes. Thankfully, shout out Keaton Ellis. I think he had, a, he, he had an extra pair of Keaton was, Ellis. Keaton. But Dom DeLuca literally gave the shoes off his feet and didn't have any other shoes going in, down in Guatemala. It was it was one of the greatest feats I've ever seen. Done. I know, right? That's but not bad. Yeah, it, it's a good story. <laughs> it's, it's definitely what a good size one. Are you? 12. He was a big kid. How old was the kid? The kid was, I think he was like 12 years old, he too. Was, yeah. He, he was, was yeah. young. We might be well, signing it here eventually. That's like one of those things. It's like you don't need to. You, you you didn't do it to, for people to talk about it, right? You no, just did no, it because no. that kid needed it. That's awesome, dude. Mm -hmm. That's Good how you. that's how Dom gets down, man. You heard, all the, you heard all the women in the crowd. Oh, <laughs> yeah. See, very you nice. Know, don't you very yeah, nice? Man. Exactly. So now you're in the puzz stage right now. Good for you. The puzz <laughs> Goon has not stopped. How many talking. guys were two time captains here? Because Puzz was the first one I ever knew. It's John Sutherland was. Uh, hmm. Clifford was here for 17 years, so he, yeah, got, he, he was, was at least one. Yeah, seven years captain. <laughs> well, I, I think you'd have to say, I think the, the, cool, the good way to go about it is non-quarterbacks, non-quarterback two-time captains. I think that's more fair. I mean, it's it's definitely an honor, but it, it kind of goes with it oh, a lot of the time. Sutherland, DeLuca, and Paul Leslie. Yeah, there we go. That, the list I'm sure there were the linebackers, too, then. Who were the, who were the main uh, captains? Oh, there was none before. Puzz, Puzz was never, Puzz was the first ever two-time captain. Gary Collins oh, yeah. wasn't a two-time captain. No. Really? He had seniors. The old man was going to pick who the old man wanted to be the captain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell a story. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we we it, secretly some of us used to put because the players had a vote when we were in bowl trips. He either had senior captains that were game week. That was my last year. But in '94, we actually had Keen, 
captain through the whole year. Just Joe had a feel for the team, but we always when we voted for our captains at the end of the year. We always knew who was going to pick. So I always used to sign Scotty Paterno, which was one of Joe's sons, <laughs> to get a couple people to do that and be like, "Hey, Scotty Paterno's a captain," you know. So, but yeah, we never, <laughs> we never read it out. He, he, he always we a hundred percent of us could have. I'm sure James is the same way, but a hundred percent of us could have said that when we wanted to be uh, Spider. Mm-hmm. To be the team captain, and then he was going to pick his five guys that he wanted anyway. So, yeah, but that that makes it is an unbelievable honor to be a two time captain here at Penn State. It is, especially growing up at Penn State. How many games? How many Penn State games do you think you came to growing up? Living what about an hour forty five, two hours away? I mean, we've had tickets, season tickets from early nineties to I was in high school, so I want to say at least twenty fourteen. We had season mm-hmm. tickets, and you were at the uh, twenty sixteen. Ohio yes, State, was. Penn State, whiteout, right? Rushed I, the field that, too. That probably that was my like first memory on Snapchat. Actually, mm, really, I remember you telling yeah. me that. Actually, that's really. Good. Were you at the <laughs> Were you at the O five Ohio State game? Yes, I was. Were you that really? was my first ever Penn State game. Yeah. Wow, I would tell you this. Do you ever hear the story about that? I have no. Ohio State's equipment manager called Spider on Monday, and said, "Spider, I have to tell you this. That was the most unbelievable environment I have ever been involved with." This is a guy who coaches Ohio State. They won how many national titles in a few years? They play Michigan every year. They have the game, all of that stuff. He calls Spider and says, "I cannot believe the atmosphere of that stadium that night. It was mm-hmm. just electric. The whole place was that. They the, thought the place was going to fall down. That was the, <laughs> that was the second whiteout, right? I don't uh, know whether if it was a whiteout or not. I, I don't I know think what. It might have been the first official. I think the official was like official. Notre Dame was like the next year, but that game was a night game. Mm-hmm. The way I say it, our fans were absolutely starving. Because they had gone three out of four losing years. So our fans were actually, when I came back, the knock on our fans forever was they were just like like Alabama fans. Like, okay, great job, great job, guys. You're going to win. You know what I mean? And they weren't hungry anymore. When I came back in 05, those fans were hungry. They were starving for wins and victory. And we go against Ohio State. There was like a, a rainy mist going on during the game. Uh, just everything that happened during that game, it was just unbelievable. And the Puzz Leslie getting a sack late in the game, and then Tamba ending the game. And they, that was this, I believe it was Mo Bamba. Am I right, ladies? Mo, and it was like, Ooh, and they were just jumping, doing this. The students were. And like the next week, they actually had to have the thing structurally checked out to see if it's okay. Like Ironhead tells us, he was in the press box and he was like, it was like this going back and forth because the whole stadium was jumping up and down and like they had to have a professional company come in and like say like okay uh yeah you can't do this jumping around thing because it's going to <laughs> cave in and jeff i'm not jeff jeff i was telling you it was swaying the press box was swaying back and forth that's how loud and ruckus that night was that was your first ever game yes night. and i painted myself white for it I think I've seen that photo. You definitely That's have. Really My mom good. definitely brought that up. It's a little weird. You're like, uh, <laughs> you bought Casper over here. <laughs> did you have a beard then too? Or I know, think I like, did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was just saying that the Hawk though, when Dom first got here, he didn't have any facial. Like you look way older now. When you heard, you looked really young when you, cause he was, a, he was kind of a safety too. So he didn't have as much yeah. weight on him either. You definitely definitely looks like he's grown up a little bit since he's he's got it in college, that's for sure. But um, um, I, I do want to ask you, um, obviously being in a room, like I said, Tony Roas, Kobe King, bunch of guys like that, a um, couple of guys you mentioned, so coming from safety down to linebacker, uh, what does it mean to you to be a part of, like you said, LBU, but being in a room with guys like that uh, and, and being able to play off of them? I mean, it's a huge honor. I mean, it makes everyone better. I mean, having – Kobe King, I mean, he's the one that helped me make the switch from safety to the linebacker, and now he's like one of the best linebackers in the nation. And just being able to play around with him and uh, him and Tony Rojas just doing our jobs at a high level, I mean, it's always just great to have those people to have your back. Yeah, now you are headed into USC. I know you guys mm-hmm. were excited last time you were out there was the Rose Bowl, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And it was absolutely raining the entire the time whole week. i gotta say what, what was your weather down there for the 94 rose bowl Cause, right because it sounds weird california yeah, yeah we, had rain. No, we had no rain it rained the end it was the worst well, week to be in cali story, but I, can't really discuss that. I believe it <laughs> I, I believe that where did you guys stay when you were in cali because we stayed right next to the crypto well it's now crypto arena uh used to be the staples center you have no idea where it's so huge out there. It was like it is a big like place. we were in like a mall, like across the street from the mall, and like we were walking around in our sweatsuits, and people were like, What are you doing here? 
And you're like, we're playing in the Rose Bowl. Like, oh, you're here for the parade? And you're like, oh, we're here for the freaking game. <laughs> can, we, can we talk about the parade? Why is the parade bigger it, than the game? It, it, it's, 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 it really that's is. why I hate the Rose Bowl. The Rose Bowl is the worst bowl we went to. Always say it. And we'll say it till the day I die. It was just nothing to do. It was just like, it was so spread out. It was like, we were, you know, obviously a business trip and stuff like that. But it was like, you know, you go to Universal Studios, you do the, you know, Disney, your whatever, Disney World, Disneyland, whatever one is out there. All that stuff. It gets old and tired, you know. It's just like, you just want to go play a football game. It's all you want to do. So, but the weather we had was pretty good. Yeah, no, not uh, a, I do have one. Not I have one store before we got to go to a commercial. But uh, my old roommate, Jeff Hardings was a very smart, smart human individual, like like academic All-American, like a, but a two-time All-American football player. So he's just a complete savage. But he doesn't have my sense of humor. So we go out and see Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> and I'm Classic. like, That's I'm funny. literally leaving the movie theater. Like, that was life-changing. That was, I, I literally just had a life-changing moment. I'm like, that was the greatest movie I think I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and Jeff looks at me and goes, that was the dumbest movie I ever saw. <laughs> I said, Jeff, it's called Dumb and Dumber, man. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, but it's just dumb. I didn't get it. I'm like, dude, all right, man. It's, just like, it's not for everybody, but no, that, that actually, I picture you, Goon, like you are an Adam Sandler 90s movie. Like that's where sure. you belong. Like oh, You don't even know the Adam Sandler stuff before his movies. He had CDs out before his movies. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. I really don't know anything about oh, that. Dude. Oh, dude. Oh, Come on over to the house, uh, Landon. We'll, 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 we'll go through them one night. You'll be like, what the hell were you guys doing? We, we I don't definitely. know what they were doing making them, but it's actually pretty funny. But they were definitely dropping some acid and, you know, not us. <laughs> it was just some crazy stuff, but it was like really funny stuff. It just made it made sense to us. It was fun. Were you were you here when Adam Sandler came here? I was and not. Then, he just got after me. Uh, but I know the whole story because my little brother was on the team. Yeah, well, he he was inspired. The movie wa- The Water Boy. He was inspired. Um, Spider told me the story Spider. about you know Spider, and he you know we were pumped. You had to pump the pump the water, and then and then you could drink it and squirt it, and that's kind of where he got the idea. The milk to, cows. Yes, the cows. You pump full of water, and you had like three <laughs> spinners on there or, or checkers on there. But it was like he just looked. Adam Sandler was like watching Spider. He's going, my God. And he's like, then he created that whole like backpack thing yeah. he had where he was giving guys water and stuff like that. But he got it all from Penn State and from Spider. Oh, that's great. Great yeah. story. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we will be right back after this break. This is the Modelo Blue White Player Show. Uh, and make sure you guys come out this Saturday to watch party 3 30 at the Penn State Golf Course, food, drinks, all of it. Never beat SC. Nope. At SC. Oh. Didn't know that. We've never won. Did not know that either. Did not. Okay. It's going to be a first this weekend. We will be right back after this break. Woo! 